What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, the Phoenix Suns took on the San Antonio Spurs, and San Antonio got the job done. San Antonio ended up beating the uh, Phoenix Suns. It's hard to beat, say this all the time, hard to beat a team two times in a short span of period, regardless of the teams. Uh, but also, one of the things that I highlighted heavily the last you know few weeks or so is that the one team out of all the teams in front of us that I believe the Lakers have the best chance of overtaking and jumping into that eighth seed is the Phoenix Suns. Their schedule is brutal, right? And they just got the last like winnable, like they should win those games out of the way. But in that same breath, I did keep saying and reiterating that San Antonio seems to have Phoenix's number. They beat them the previous two times and that could they get at least one win against the Phoenix Suns. That would be huge for the Lakers going forward. And yesterday, we saw the Lakers get to watch San Antonio without Victor Wimbanyama, mind you, beat the Phoenix Suns. That is huge, right? Because the Lakers have a long hill to climb. Um, and currently, they still are the ninth seed in the uh, Western Conference, but they are two and a half games back of the Phoenix Suns. Lakers take on the Milwaukee Bucks today, and this game is incredibly crucial for a multitude of reasons. Now, first off, LeBron James. LeBron James, so he is ruled out officially. Lakers have officially ruled LeBron James out for this game. The Lakers do have a back-to-back. -back. Uh, first today, they got the Milwaukee Bucks, and then tomorrow, they take on the Memphis Grizzlies. So the logic is you sit LeBron against the team that you have the likelihood of losing to regardless of whether LeBron plays or not, and then you bring him for the team that you believe you have the most success of beating with or without LeBron, and then you add in LeBron and it just elevates you that much more. That's the idea. That's the logic. That's the hope. And we'll see if that works out. We'll see if that pays off. Lakers have kind of operated all season that way, and most of the time, it has worked out in that way where they, you know, they, they've lost or sometimes even won the game without LeBron. He comes back and then they end up winning that game. And it's good. So if you beat Milwaukee today, then guess what? Now your likelihood of going two in a row on this back to back is just that much more increased. Also worth noting, the Lakers already beat the Milwaukee Bucks, although in LA, uh, without LeBron James. Now, Again, this is very impactful because this would give us another half game, which would put us two games back of the Phoenix Suns. And now you just basically got to outpace them by two games the rest of the way, which is very doable. The Phoenix Suns schedule is like, it's unfairly brutal, right? You just kind of go through the lid. You're just like, man, they, they made somebody upset. Now, I've seen people kind of throw out that like, well, Phoenix, some of these teams are going to rest and whatnot. Like... A lot of these teams are still in a fight, and they're probably going to be in it all the way till the end of the season. Like that top one through four bracket is very likely going to go down to the wire, right? Even that four five matchup with the Clippers and the and the Pelicans, right? That's probably going down to the wire. You got a bunch of games out east where if that happens, and you got to keep in mind if they're going to rest against the Suns, then they're probably going to rest against the Lakers. And Phoenix has not done a good job of beating teams that they should beat, right? Like, again, look at the San Antonio Spurs. I've been very spot on with Phoenix this year, right? Go look at the videos I made going into the season. I mean, I've basically laid out exactly how Phoenix's season is going to go. And I'm pretty confident that it's going to be a tight race. Now, obviously, the Lakers have to do their part. They have to hold up their end, right? They got a six-game road trip here. In my opinion, they got to go four and two in this road trip. So I had the Lakers in their final 13 games going 10 and three, right? That was my little like prediction. That's where I believe that the Lakers will end up landing. The two losses I have are the this Bucks game, which is now even more likely without LeBron James, uh, this Bucks game. And then also I said the second Pacers game, because much like I said about Phoenix, it is very hard to win against the team twice in such a short turnaround. This time you'll be in Indiana, right? Both games, Indiana, just the Lakers match up well. So I do have confidence that the Lakers can beat Indiana again, but it's just, it's really hard, 
So I had those two losses. And then the third loss is one of either the, the Minnesota game or the Cleveland Cavaliers game. One of those two games, I think, will be um, very likely an L for the Lakers. But we'll also see, right? Because there is the possibility that teams are resting, right? If, if Minnesota basically has, say, the three C locked up, then they might just say, you know what? Let's just be done with it. Let's rest, get everybody healthy. Same thing with Cleveland, right? Cleveland could end up, they have like the three seed locked up and they're not going to be able to catch the Milwaukee Bucks and they're safe enough to not drop back into the four seed. Then maybe they just go, hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's just rest Donovan Mitchell. Let's rest Garland. Let's rest guys and, and put ourselves in a position to be healthy. Uh, the Pelicans, right? We play the Pelicans. If the Pelicans have like the four or five locked up, Right, they're already without Brandon Ingram. Do they just go, hey, let's rest Zion, let's rest uh, uh, CJ McCollum, let's make sure that we're healthy going into the playoffs, even if we do finish fifth? Again, those are all real possibilities. But we can't go under the assumption that that's going to be the case. Right, We can't just assume that, oh, all these teams are going to do what they can to help the Lakers, although it would be helping themselves still. right? Teams want to show up for the Lakers. Right? Every time somebody's hurt, their leg fell off, all of a sudden it magically regrows. It's just how it is when you're the Lakers. So teams don't want to face the Lakers. Teams are going to do whatever they can to try to get the Lakers out of the playoffs as conveniently as possible. Uh, so to me, Lakers are, and I've talked about this, are in charge of their own destiny here to an extent, right? Obviously, they can't control other teams losing. But as you've seen, teams like Phoenix, one or two of these teams are going to drop. The Kings have a tough schedule. The Dallas Mavericks have a tough schedule. The Phoenix Suns have a brutal schedule. One of those three teams are going to lose some games, right? If the Lakers go and they only lose like two or three games the rest of the way, they're going to at least be in that conversation to where maybe it comes down to the last game and you kind of live with the result. But the Lakers need to control what they can control, which is win their games. D'Lo, it looks like D'Lo is going to be back. Um, he missed the previous game with an illness. Spencer Dinwiddie was incredible in that game, right? To me, LeBron's out, start Spencer, right? Reward Spencer for doing so well in the previous game and adjust to his role. I, I'd like to see the Lakers put Spencer in some more actions on ball, let him operate and run some pick and rolls. Got a report earlier that one of the big reasons Spencer Dinwiddie struggled in Brooklyn was he wasn't allowed to run like pick and roll action or anything like that or any isolation action. Uh, he basically was limited to what he could do where the Lakers have basically said, hey, you have to do what you want, right? And to me, that is huge because he is a guy that is best at operating in those pick and rolls. He is best in those isolation situations to beat his defender on a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, be able to create for others, be able to drive and kick out. So to me, if you have, say... Our starting five is D'Lo, Reeves, Spence, Rui, and Anthony Davis. What you could do is obviously let D'Lo run point, but on occasion, because D'Lo is so good off ball, Austin Reeves, uh, Rui Hachimura being 40 plus percent. One, Rui, sticking with him, he gets to play the four, which is where his natural position is and where he is best at. So, you know, he's probably going to have a better game. I mean, all the elite games he has are all from uh, him playing the four. And then Spence, you could have him on ball, and then D'Lo, Austin, and Rui kind of spreading the floor and allow him to run some pick-and-roll actions with Anthony Davis, allow him to run some, you know, just pick-and-pop actions or some driving kicks, uh, and then kind of just gauge and read what the defense gives you. Look, Milwaukee, their, their guard defenders are not there. Lakers should be able... To dominate that matchup. Now you have the concern of Damian Lillard going off and they could dominate the matchup too. But I do think we have that kind of equalizer there where it's like, okay, D'Lo, Reeves, Spence, you three need to apply pressure on Malik Beasley, on a Damian Lillard, and just be relentless. We saw what D'Lo did in the previous game against them. We need to keep applying that pressure. Um, Giannis, right? We'll see how he goes and if he's a, if he's a green light. But I imagine he plays. Although, if we're the Lakers, we kind of want him to play because Milwaukee's actually been very good without Giannis this year. So 
there's that power struggle at times with Dame and Giannis. We kind of could use that to our advantage. But nonetheless, look, Lakers got to do their job. Go in, handle business, get this W, thank Phoenix. But you, Phoenix losing means nothing if you keep losing, right? Phoenix losing means the world if you keep winning and you keep rattling off these wins. Let's use the momentum we have. Let's build on this. Again, I do have this as a loss prior, but that doesn't mean that it has to be, right? This is just me guessing. And if you're the Lakers, every game for you is an absolute dire must win. Doesn't matter what some random guy on YouTube thinks is going to happen. You need to, I'm hoping they're like, you know, hey, F Tyler, we're getting this W. Great, go get this win, right? Because to me, they need to be locked in. They need to be focused. They need to show up. They need to, it'd be great to start this road trip with a W here against one of the better teams in the league. Let's get it. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Uh, do you like the uh, matchup today with or without LeBron? Because again, we're without LeBron. So what do you think? Do you like that matchup? What do you think of the Phoenix Suns losing? Uh, was that a surprise to you? Or were you like, no, nah, like, no, Phoenix is, has had their struggles against San Antonio for whatever reason. But um, anyway, again, have you feel whatever thoughts are. I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.